Hi guys, I'm Shane, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a quick trick you can use to boost your imperfections like fingerprints and smudges. Imperfections are a great way to increase realism in your renders, but sometimes they just need that extra boost. So, let's get into it. So if we jump into the scene here, I'll just quickly break down some of the stuff that's going on. So we've got a glass and liquid, which I modeled in Fusion um, for an old render. We've got a phone model, which I downloaded off the Keyshot Cloud. We've also got a chair, which was modeled in Blender, plane, which is working as the tabletop, and then a background HDRI from HDRI Haven. I wanted to have a background HDRI so that we could get some detail in the reflections. Um, and I also think it looked quite nice, worked quite well with the wood here. Um, but I did have to change it a little bit just by reducing the saturation on import because it didn't match up very well. Then also added one little HDRI pin just to add a bit of light here on the chair. But the main lighting of the scene is actually coming from two area lights which you might have seen. So if I take the brightness down there you can see them a bit clearer. Now these shadows are much harsher um, than they are in reality. Uh, I think that's just because my computer's taking a while to render, but they do soften out. But you can see them here, if I come out of that camera. We've got one larger one, which is kind of on the cooler end of the Kelvin spectrum. And it's not very powerful, but that's just adding a little bit of a cool light on, on this rim here. Turn that one off. Yeah, so you can see that there. And then the other one is our main sort of key light, which is driving most of the lighting in the scene. And it, this is the warmer side of things here. So using these two contrasting colors, creates a nice little bit of contrast there. And then we just bring in that HDRI just to lighten up the rest of the scene. So the tip that I'm going to be showing today is how to accentuate some of your details using a, a bit of Photoshop magic. This isn't something I do on all my renders, just on the ones that I think need that helping hand just to bring them out a bit more. Um, works particularly well on glasses for smudges and things like that. So if I open up the material graph here, you can see my uh, setup for the glass here. So we've got a dielectric, dielectric, don't know how that's actually pronounced, <laughs> material, um, because the, the liquid has actually been modelled so that it intersects the glass geometry. So using a dielectric material works good there. And then I'm getting my imperfections here, uh, which is the smudges and the water drops by using the roughness channel. So I've got a spots texture, which I've inverted so that you can get this kind of, you know, dried water spot look there. And by the way, if you don't know how to sort of isolate your maps, if you double click them in the material graph and press C on your keyboard, then that will show it there. And then I've also got a triplanar. Again, not the best resolution of texture, but uh, just controlling uh, the, this smudge texture. And um, the reason I use the triplanar is because it kind of smooths out the mapping a bit better, um, especially along the bottom here, because if you use cylindrical, then you'd be having some, some sort of weird mapping going on the bottom there because this isn't UV unwrapped. I've then combined them together using a colour composite and changed the blend mode to screen, which uh, which means that the, the spots texture, if I just pop that up to one, you can see how clear they come through there. Screen basically lets all the light values through. So I've just reduced the background alpha to 0.2 there because I don't want it to be too obvious. I, I want the main imperfection to be the smudges. So if I come out of that, I've then gone into a colour to number again just to bump up a bit of the bit of the contrast there, and that's in the roughness. And then I've also got those uh, fingerprints kind of going into a bit of a bump with a fractal noise. And that's basically the material there. This this whole scene is available for download on my website. Um, if you do want to get into the nitty gritty and check out all the materials and things like that. But for now, I'm just going to show you the technique I use to accentuate these smudges. And basically what we're going to do is double click on our color composite and press C so that we can isolate this map. And we're basically going to render this as if it's its own render pass. And that's how, how essentially we're going to use it. So if you open up your render box here, 
set your resolution and everything to the same as your final render is going to be. You would ideally do this after you've already done your render. And then I'm just going to enable the clown pass. You don't really need the clown pass here as long as you've already done your first render. And this is just going to be added on after the fact because we can use the clown pass from the original render. But I'm just going to leave it on for here. Uh, format, I'd probably change that to PNG. don't know why it was set to JPEG. Uh, but again, because we're, we're just adding it as, as a pass, we're not going to be doing any post processing to this map here. And then samples. I've just stuck it on 150 for, for, for this example here. Uh, you may want to go higher, but it's not really that important because remember, we're just going to be isolating the texture here. So it's more down to the, uh, the quality of the textures that you're using. Just click render. This will eventually res up and it will save, but we won't wait. I'll just bring up one that I've done earlier. So open up your original render. This is one that I did earlier. I haven't just rendered this out now. And then you're going to drag in your smudges pass which we just made and if everything's been set up right then it should just fit on there perfectly so we're going to use our render passes from the original render in this case and we're going to use the clown pass again in the download the full photoshop file is on there with all the post processing which i did to the entire image if you want to check that out but just for now we're going to use the the clown pass here and we're going to select our one tool by clicking here or pressing W and we're going to select the cup there. Then going to collapse that down and hide that. I'm going to use this selection as a mask on the smudges pass by clicking this button here to create a mask. So uh, obviously that doesn't look quite right for what, what we want, but basically we want to apply just the lights here of the image. We don't want any of this dark. so we're going to change the blend mode here to screen. And as you can see there, that's added in a whole bunch of these imperfections. And you may you may like that look, um, but I think it's a bit too heavy. You could go in and affect this mask uh, just by getting a black brush, make it quite soft. And obviously you can paint away the different ones that you don't want and isolate the bits that you do want. But I'm just going to show you a, another trick which I used in the original. So to, to view just your mask, if you hold Alt on your keyboard and click the mask, that will show all the mask information. And what we're going to do is go into Filter, Render, Clouds. And this will get rid of our mask. Um, but basically what this does is it almost adds like a, a clouds texture. Um, which will kind of add a bit of uh, imperfection to our mask. So we can go back in and select the cup on our, make sure we have our clown pass. And in fact, we're also going to select the liquid here. Hide that, go back into here, hold Alt and click again to view. And then you're going to just take your brush, make it nice and big. And we're going to paint away the background. So, so if you, Go to your marquee tool by pressing M and click select inverse. Then that will select everything other than the, the cup. And we take our black brush and we just paint over it. And there you go. So now when we go back and have a look at our image, we've got the, then the map isn't just flat color. You know, there's a bit of um, dimension to it. And we could also go in here and, you know, we could we could play around with the feather um, just to soften these edges. And it also softens here so that that transition isn't so jagged. As you can see there, there's a bit of stepping going on. So we make it something like one. You could obviously go in and tidy up your masks. This is just a quick example. And then even here, if you wanted to take it that little bit further, you can alt left click on your mask again and, you know, just take up or you could do it without actually take out bits that you don't want you could change the opacity of your of your brush so maybe this one's just a bit too harsh and this one here we don't want at all um, but obviously you're going to want to take your your opacity down just to a level where it's just noticeable enough because remember the the key to these imperfections is less is more you know you want to you want it to be just noticeable so like here i'm not really liking what it's doing to the back of this cup here so i'm just gonna 
take my brush at 50% just so it's still there but it's not too obvious so if we now view that you can see this sort of back bit has gone a bit darker and that is essentially it for adding those extra smudges in so you can see here it's made a nice little difference on there so on my Instagram, I also did put out a story with this post um, asking if there was anything else that you wanted to know about this scene. And I had a few people come back wanting to know more about the table material here. So I'm just going to break that down. Um, so if we open up the material graph, this may be a bit daunting if you've uh, never really dealt with the material graph before, but it is quite simple. Uh, basically, the wood material here is just using the ash wood by Keyshot. And this is a tip that I actually got off designed by Nadim. Uh, if you check him out on Instagram and YouTube. So as you can see here, if we just press C to isolate that, uh, it's very saturated. So I added a color adjust node and connected that in there and just reduced some of the values here. But just to add a little bit more detail, I wanted to have the, these kind of dots and things like that in the, in the background. Um, so I've used the clean concrete material, um, which again is just in Keyshot, added a color to number to just isolate the darkest values, gone into a color composite with my wood material and changed the blend mode to multiply and reduced the background alpha so it's not so heavy. And then that's how I got this sort of look here. Another thing that people were interested in was the ring here. So again, this, this is quite simple. This is just a PNG uh, that I got off, off the internet, um, off Google, and I've just added a color to number and put that into the specular. Um, I've then also added another color to number so that it's completely black and white. And I've combined that using a color composite with the wood texture, obviously making it the darkest here so that it's, so it's the smoothest, not as, not as rough as, as the table. So it looks nice and wet. And then the sort of the last thing on there is just the bump map, which I've just added um, for the, yeah, the clean concrete and the wood. What else? The phone. Some people are interested in seeing how I got the sort of crack texture. See here, it's just a, a, a sort of plastic material um, that I've got applied there with um, black. I don't think it's pure black. Uh, is it pure black? Yeah, it is. Oh, that's uh, sin number one. Um, don't use pure black or pure white. Um, <laughs> but there you go. Rules are there to be broken. So all I've got in there is the same smudges map uh, on the on the specular really hard to see there and I think that's because I'm in my photographic mode if I go into basic you can see here but again it is supposed to be a very subtle um, effect there but the, the the main thing that's driving this crack texture is actually the crack is controlling the roughness so again this is just a uh, texture I got off Google um, used a color to number to really try and isolate the the cracks and get rid of all the little dust particles then just plug that into the roughness and and that's essentially it um, I've also got it plugged into the, the bump, but even if I take that off, you can see it's not really um, doing much. Uh, if I take the bump out, you can see it kind of, we, we lose that one a bit there. And you do want a bit of bump because in reality, a, a crack does actually crack your screen. You know, it's not just making it rougher. And that's pretty much everything for this scene. As I said, there, there are other details and things like that that you may, may want to check out. So this scene is available for download on my website shanespencedesign.co.uk it's part of a package with another scene which you may have seen if you have uh, watched some of my previous tutorials because so i wanted to kind of show how you can use the same sort of model and uh, make two completely different looking scenes in terms of feel and emotion even though they're quite similar in composition and that's the end of the video thanks for watching as always if you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comments below make sure you check out my website and follow me on instagram